kind of zoomed in on the 40. This is Norma. Oh, I'm so glad I caught you. You won't believe this, but Larry's car won't start. And not only that, it's parked behind my car. Oh, you can? Oh, great. I'm so glad. Well, since you're coming in our direction anyway, I thought maybe you could pick us up. Oh, thanks so much. See you later. Bye.
Number two, what is your name, please? What is your name, please? Oh, oh, my name's Jack Thompson. My, my name's Jack Thompson. <laughs> and contestant number three, what is your name, please? Huh? <laughs> what, what is your name, please? <laughs> my name is Jack Tompkins. 
He loves the party. <laughs> Number four, turn your number around. What is your name, please? My name is Jack Thompson. And number five, what is your name, please? My name is, is Jack Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Contestant number six, what is your oh, name? I'm please? really Jack Thompson. <laughs> number seven, what is your name? I'm without a doubt, Jack So listen carefully. Can you hear me, number two? Turn the radio down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I must. Stand up. I can't. I, please, you can't stand up? I can't stand up. We want to take a look at your chair, if you don't mind. I can't stand up. You can't? All right. I can't stand up. Why can you not stand up? Because I went to school on the north end of the Brazos. Only the people on the south end of the Brazos stand up at football games. Can't stand, can't stand, is, is it halftime? 
Well, you know, someone, that time? someone told me the other day that the reason that California has all the gays and Texas has all the Aggies is that California got first choice. <laughs> I think about that. Tell us, is it halftime? Tell us why you're obviously such an avid football fan. Why in the world? Why is it halftime? Is it halftime? Is it halftime? It's not halftime. Not halftime. I gotta sit down. <laughs> is it half halftime? Are you going to let me finish this? <laughs> yeah, it's halftime. I can stand up. <laughs> stand up halftime. All right, all right. Tell us why, with your football outfit you got on there, you got your binoculars. <laughs> you got your double trouble hat, although I notice it's not rainproof, and you've got to have that if you're going to Baylor Stadium. No, we buy those for 25 cents. Okay. And what are the earphones all about? You've got to, got to be prepared. Were you, were you listening to the game? No. Oh. <laughs> What's that for? We see, I'm the, uh, I'm the number one fan. Uh, I, I know every, that. Every, everybody wonders why you have these, have, why you have these, why you wear these to the games. Uh -huh. The reason is because when you're the number one fan, you've been through a lot with those Baylor Bears. I mean, you've been through hard times. We know that. Haven't been many good times, but you got to stick with them through thick and thin. All right. So you wear these, <laughs> so you can listen to something else. <laughs> I mean, I mean, fifty thousand people go to Baylor Stadium and they lose. Why do they do it? Because they all get together and they listen to the same thing. Rock stations. Huh? They wouldn't allow, they wouldn't allow the rock stations on campus, but you do it. In Baylor Stadium. Why everybody comes? That's it. That's it. Oh, you got something in your hip pocket too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm such a number one fan. I tell you, still like to talk about. In 19, uh, 19, uh, hmm, must have been 19, it was 1980 when we played Alabama, and uh, yeah, I think it was 1980, you know, better people kind of hard to remember about those things. 1980, we went to, uh, we went to uh, the Cotton Bowl. She only has two hours of film. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we went to the, uh, we went to the Cotton Bowl, and uh, we didn't play very well, but uh, I discovered something that was good for all better people, and I'm, uh, I'm out kind of spreading it around now. And that is that, that the way that, uh, that you get over a bad loss like that is you find a hotel, not just any hotel. <laughs> and you pick for you, yourself. But you, but you find a hotel that serves amaretto freezes. Oh. <laughs> and, you just, and you just sit there in the bar and talk about that, what might have been. Uh-huh. <laughs> run out of ice cream and amaretto, you know it's time to go. <laughs> Never going place without him. <laughs> tell, tell us about this golf club. I never go any place without him. I've uh, I've used this at uh, on a lot of occasions, but I you know the time probably that I've used it that it came in the uh, the handiest. There's a place in Waco. <laughs> There's a place in Waco that's really very famous he called it. it's called Cameron Park. <laughs> Do they have a golfing uh, they have a golf range? There's no golf. Well, mm -hmm. I uh, know there's no, no golf out there. there. <laughs> Why would you take a golf club, Cameron? Well, there's a place up there called Lover's Leap. And there are a lot of other places kind of out in the woods back there, a lot of woods and everything. And I used to go out there, carry this with me everywhere. I used to go out there, keep it in the back of my car. And uh, the time that I used it the most is I was out there and I had this uh, friend of mine with me. We were there and it was kind of a cold night. Another, show. another football fan? Another football fan. <laughs> sure was. She was football. I mean, he was, <laughs> <laughs> he was football fan. And it's kind of there in the trees and, and everything, and I was sitting there, and we were visiting about uh, Baylor's most recent football game. Kind of steamy there on the inside, and dead gum, I'll tell you what I saw. What did you see? There was a guy up in the tree. Another football man. Another football man trying to peek in my window. <laughs> I mean, I was incensed. Wait a minute, let me interrupt you there. Why in the world would he have an interest in peeking in your window? <laughs> I think you went to Texas. <laughs> now that I think about it, I think you went to Texas. That's what he was. All right. I was in a sense. I mean, here he was on private property up there in that tree trying to peek in my window. Look at that tree, Dad. Look at that. Didn't believe I ever told that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Faster than the speed of him, I'm going to reach the back seat. I got this golf club that I take with me anywhere. I got out of there. I got out of the car. I chased out of the tree. I mean, I halfway climbed that tree swinging at him with this golf club. I mean, he got down. I chased him all the way back down 
And then I went back and was able to uh, continue the football discussion. And, and I was at <laughs> well, you were probably pretty hot and lathered up when you got in that car. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Two BC. Thank Good you. job. Good job. We'll be hearing from number two again. I, I got to go. Oh, oh all right. excuse me. All right. Half time. Number three. You look like you. Uh, huh? <laughs> you, I know that the roar of that rifle caused your ears to uh, lose a little. Can you get that out? You're probably getting hot. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, man. You know, I have. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, uh, your outfit there. What do you do with this? I shoot with it. Well, what do you shoot? <laughs> a little bit about your hunting. Well, you know, what happens is that he gets up at 2.30, 3 in the morning, he gets out there and nobody's around, so you take it off and you put on your undies, and then you start walking down there. It's usually several miles, and you walk through this mud that gets up here, and then you, <laughs> you got a shovel with you, so you start digging in it. And you trounce over there and put the, the decoys out. Yeah. And then you come back there and you lay down in that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it happens. It's, yeah. Yeah, then it happens. What, what happens? Well, you hunt. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> but tell me, if you would, why do you go through all that? Tell me, the, why do you go through all that? I hate geeks. All right. All right. That looks kind of like a chicken to me. <laughs> Don't matter. Chicken, sparrows, birds. I hate them all. <laughs> you know, at 2.30 in the morning, I would too. <laughs> Jack, stand up if you would. <laughs> <laughs> that is truly amazing. <laughs> You're, you're, you're apparently an avid outdoorsman, sportsman. We've, we've already seen how attached you are, hunting, camping, gasoline. Oh. Tell us, if you would, a little bit about your fishing ride there. You like to fish? Used to. <laughs> I've got a brother-in-law, Spencer. <laughs> Most of us have one of those. <laughs> he promised me a good fishing trip. <laughs> Up in Iowa. Yeah. It, that's close to Idaho, isn't it? Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> 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 we were going out the place they'd been catching. <laughs> we fished all day. Didn't catch anything. Kept fishing. We thought I thought it was getting a little late, but Spencer told me that uh, we could find our way back. It didn't get too dark. And we kept fishing. Didn't catch a thing. So we finally decided to leave, and uh, it was dark. Couldn't find our way. Very cold. <laughs> very, very, very cold. cold. <laughs> shirts on, no jackets or anything. We were too busy fishing, getting ready to go, and didn't bring anything. And we started walking back, and it got colder. But found a little place, a little lean-to. Fortunately, it had a lot of paper in it. So we took this paper and wrapped ourselves up. Stayed warm. If it wouldn't have been for that lean-to, we probably froze to death. That paper. I bet you were close to Spencer. <laughs> very close as I could get. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you learn anything from this experience, Jack? Yeah, I did. 
you tell us what it is. If Spencer ever asked you to go fishing, <laughs> you want to take at least two rolls of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> All right. Jack? Jack? Oh. I swear, you know, I've read the stories of Carrie and these gals that have split personalities, but I've never known anybody that had 12 of them. Tell us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about, uh, about you, apparently you must like to farm. No, oh, I love to garden. Do you really? Yeah, you know, I got, I got half of the bayou there out behind the, <laughs> behind the house, yeah. plenty of land. Yeah. Got the best garden in the west side of Houston every year. And it's because my... My methods. My methods are beautiful. <laughs> Tell us how you plant this girl. Ma'am, I see I take my tape measure. And I go out there. CPAs are like it. <laughs> each row, I mean the, the secret, the secret to a good garden is that each row has got to be exactly twelve inches apart. <laughs> exactly. And to the extent that's not true, you come in with lousy crops. You do it right? It comes out right. You gotta build the hills just right. You gotta put the seeds in on just the right day. You know, it's all gotta work right. And you see I do such good work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my, I have prize, prize eggplants. You know, I haven't seen oh, eggplants. You ever seen an eggplant? Hey. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> Dottie told me that every year when I'd make all these crops, I'd have eggplants and I'd have corn and I'd have tomatoes and she, She'd always, I'd, I'd show her these perfect vegetables that I grew in the backyard. And she said, yeah, they really are perfect. You know, they win. Just like a CPA would have for them. <laughs> they win down at the county fair. down. <laughs> and so, I had to prove it to her, though. She kept saying it, but she kind of laughed when she did it. So I can't imagine that. <laughs> one, one year we took one of my, we took some of my eggplants down to the, down to the fair. And look here. First place, the biggest prize ever. And I am the real Jack Thomas. <laughs> what, 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 did you, have you ever had a crop failure? Have you ever had a failure? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use that word. Uh, have you had any uh, mistakes that you don't want to repeat in your garden? I wouldn't call it a failure. I guess, I guess one year there was closest I ever came, I guess. One year there was, we, we planted this beautiful row of bell peppers. <laughs> yeah? Good harvest? Oh, no, the best, the best crop of jalapenos you ever <laughs> 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 Jack. Jack, stand up if you would. Uh, You know, it, it is apparent that uh, from looking at you that, that, that you travel a great deal. Yeah. I, I know that from personal experience. Uh, and I know you travel a lot domestically, and I also know you travel a lot internationally. Would you tell us a little bit, Jack, so that, again, our judges can determine who the real Jack Thompson is? Tell us a little bit about your international travels. Well, I've traveled to Hawaii, Norway, Greece. Hawaii is not international, Jack. <laughs> Dottie got a little upset with me there, and I took the Concord home. <laughs> but I don't know how it feels to be conquered by that. <laughs>
what I think about cucumbers. But cucumbers do really strange things to me. Yeah, we were wondering because we. <laughs> and, uh, the next morning we got up for breakfast and uh, we had cucumbers again. And lunch we also had cucumbers one more time. <laughs> I spent most of my time shuffling back and forth between the bathroom, looking for these little squares of paper that you can see down here. I see. Is that, is that what they provided you with? Now, between the cucumbers and, and that, these little squares of paper, I tell you, I, I had a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I believe that. Look, next time you go, stick this in your camera case. <laughs> Jack, stand up if you would there. Jack number seven. <laughs> hey, disregard all these other guys. I am real. I can tell that because I know from personal experience that Jack Tompkins is, is a devoted father. Uh, and it's obvious by your attire that you have there that, uh, that uh, you have some experience along that line. Would you, you want to tell us, uh, what, what's that on the front of your shirt there? Looks like little feet or something. <laughs> Well, you see, I really didn't know my own kids, and I asked the doctor to footprint. Uh -huh. Every night when I go home, uh -huh. I check the footprint, and I know whether or not these are my son. Yeah, you should have, you should have fingerprinted about nine months earlier, you know? Okay. Well, go ahead. CPA's never think that far <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about how you take care. You have two boys. I have two boys. Michael and Baron. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, we come home every day at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Never come home late. I know that. Uh, we immediately sit down. I've taught them uh, Michael Learn the Gettysburg Address. Time is two years old. Uh, I've taught them Home on the Range uh, and all the nursery rhymes. Uh, just brilliant, brilliant boys. You probably told them all about your international travels, about <laughs> foreign lands. Yeah, going to Hawaii. Uh, highest achievement in fatherhood, if you would. Uh, my highest achievement, uh, well, I'm looking at... Uh, Me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just in looking at your uh, your outfit there, it, it, it must take something special for a man to dress up like that. <laughs> what does it take? To begin with, you got to call Blue Cross, Prudential, the Pope, Chief Lee Brown, and then you got to have something special. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this way, you changed our seat. For all we know, of course, you're the real Jack Tompkins. Now, that's not my decision, but you know, it must take something special for the real Jack Tompkins to sit through this. <laughs> Not the motion of 
in the ocean. It's the size of the ship, baby. <laughs> Before you sit down, before you sit down, you and Dottie, uh, I know you get along with You've been married for a number of years, and it's obvious you have a harmonious marriage, but you ever have any friends? Is there any used to have harmonious? <laughs> Har harmony. <laughs> is there ever any friction between you two? Now and then something rubs up against each other. <laughs> you all ever have a disagreement about it? Well, now, when you get right down to the case of it, we do. A case of it? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think she ought to buy it, and sometimes she thinks she ought to buy it, and sometimes we forget it. <laughs> well, would you explain to the judges what it is? Man, if you ain't never had it, you don't know what it is. <laughs> Where do you buy it? Now you're getting personal. <laughs> you buy it Valentine's Day or any time you go out of town because you can't leave town without it. Uh, <laughs> any particular store you buy it at? Yeah, I'll buy it at my brother's drugstore when he's off duty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to sit down, but, but, but before you do, I want you to know that next time you need it, Here's a little spare. Ready to take 
Ken Lay in a few minutes. <laughs> but, uh, I can't spend a few minutes with you. Call. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, it, it was Jim White. <laughs> <laughs> Jim White. Jim White. Jim White. In the research that I did on you before the program began, I, I discovered that you're extremely dedicated to your work. You love your work. I see you have some of the tools of your trade there with you, your, your dossier, your briefcase, and so forth. Uh, Jack, you're obviously on the fast track. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you're uh, highly successful, and, and I think it would help our panel of judges here if you would tell us, if you would, what, what is the key to your success? Well, mainly it's just a lot of hard work, dedication, transco. Smartness. <laughs> you know, just basically, just my own makeup, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, that, is that all there is to tell about why you're successful? Well, maybe not exactly all. There are a few other things that have played in it. Uh, I guess, maybe, you know, probably the way I start today probably has a lot to do with not only what I do and it, Succeed each year. But, you know, I get to work and I know how to make coffee. And I make coffee very good. And I'm always sure to have a good cup of fresh coffee for my special man. Damn it, he likes it black. <laughs> you could get there at 8 30 and have it ready. <laughs> After work, I kind of like to relax a little bit. Of course, my friends at Talwood don't know this, but I, I, every now and then we'll go up and sit in Jim Hooten's office and sip a little bit out of my angry cup of hemp. But then, but then, you know, if I, if I feel that I really got to come in with a strong push, I go up to Mac's office. I sit down with Big Mac. I got my cigar. I, I, I chew that sucker away. Most of the time, I take the label off before I chew the sucker. I know sometimes when you go hunting, you don't take the label off. That may be because of what I drink before I go hunting. That has a lot to do with it, Jack. Well, you know, you, you have represented many notable companies. At least that's what you, you told me before the show began. Do you have any mementos from any of those famous companies? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Would you be kind enough to share them with us? Can we talk you into it? Oh, great, you oh. probably will. <laughs> well, you go back tomorrow. How do you do this? <laughs> Back to my early days, my early days, back when I was a senior and I was doing all these purchase investigations, I really worked hard. I worked hard for this class. And they really appreciate me. Most of you may have heard about them. BFI, and they gave me a memento. They wanted me to be able to be sure and remember them, so they gave me a memento, and I treasured it all my life, and I keep it on my desk, and here it is. <laughs> Back when I was doing airlines, 
Most of this group probably won't be able to figure it out. Consider <laughs> <laughs> the accusations and casting of dispersions to the university to the south. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as I can find it, it's in here somewhere. Anyway, I sat on my desk and uh, they sure want it since I'm not on the job anymore. <laughs> Don't remember. <laughs> all this, it is, it is amazing 
to me to find out, as I did in my research, that you're such a successful and prominent investor. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Warehouse? Gaming? Christmas? <laughs> sure, I like Christmas. <laughs> you need some money. I'll count me in. Count me in. We'll have, we'll have uh, outlets in Boston and Los Angeles all over. <laughs> This is uh, excuse me. No, that, uh, that's quite all right. This is a, uh, a Christmas decorating company. Yes, uh, and he told me that we're going to name it Tompkins Decorating. <laughs> <laughs> this is located in Kansas. Oh no! <laughs> One of the better deals. <laughs> you know, I, Jack, you I don't. About this? Oh, you about you're this? in the real estate business too. too. <laughs>
I thought maybe we Thank could. Thank you. Thank you. That just gives that we could be having our dessert. Well, you open presents, maybe. You don't get yeah, to you eat dessert. You get dessert. Put that back. Is there a plan for one short open? I think he was ready to make a speech that we deserve. What, what? Yeah, that'd be too good. What the heck? Yeah. There is ice cream in the kitchen. If anybody wants ice cream, come in the kitchen and I'll scoop you up some. Does everybody want ice cream? I'll just go in and start scooping. <laughs> okay, well, what do you know? I wanted to just take, like, take them in there. Well, everybody can just get their tart and then come on in. I'll okay, just, well, is anyone going to have tarts? <laughs> 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 okay, well, I don't care if we have a tart. Are you? No, I'm Do you think I'm going to do that? Just a few south.